This episode is brought to you by Roundtable Group, the experts on experts. We've been connecting attorneys with experts for over 25 years. Find out more at roundtablegroup.com. Welcome to Discussions at the Roundtable. I'm your host, Noah Balmer. And today I'm excited to welcome Dr. Jill B. Kramer to the show. Now, Dr. Kramer is the founder and director of the Roanoke Area MS Center and is a board certified neurologist, uh, maintaining a practice at Blattsburg Neurology, uh, both of which are in Virginia. She is the principal investigator for numerous studies and is a sought after expert witness. Dr. Kramer holds an MD from Georgetown and a BS in neurobiology and behavior from Cornell. You have an impressive medical career spanning over 30 years. Wow. Uh, was, med- was medicine always your path? So it's about 20 years. Just don't want to age myself too much. Uh, but, <laughs> but yes, from the time I finished high school, I knew I wanted to go into medicine and I knew I wanted to do something in neurobiology. So I am a practicing neurologist now. Um, so, you know, the, the medical field is ever evolving and you're an accomplished researcher. Um, is research kind of the primary means to remaining an expert in your field? It's not. My clinical practice and the patients that I see every day are the typical mechanism for getting patients in and working with the lawyers. That, that's interesting. So so what, what exactly, you know, backing up a little bit from, you know, your specific field, just in general, what does expertise mean to you? What does it mean to be an expert? That's a great question. And of course, if you've ever been in a deposition situation, you know what the legal definition is, but of course, we <laughs> as physicians, what, what makes an expert in their area? And it is certainly somebody who has had sufficient training, certification, and appropriate time in the, in the field. So is that two years? Is it five years? Is it 10 years? We could certainly bargain with one another about how much time that means and how involved a person needs to be. But you like to see some experience to go with all of the credentials that we come out of medical school and residency with. Let's talk about your career as an expert witness. When you were very first engaged, what was that initial call like? Was it out of the blue or are you looking to get into expert witnessing? No, I had no idea what expert witnessing was. It sort of fell upon me. I was treating a gentleman who had been ejected from his truck in a terrible car accident and had a traumatic brain injury. And his lawyer called, we would like to videotape you interviewing the patient. Would you be comfortable with that? And I said, sure. And the patient, because he had a brain injury, had a lot of trouble coming up with the date. He started stuttering, he was crying. And the lawyer said, that really demonstrated his brain injury and what his deficits are. Would, would you like to do more of this work in the future? And I said, yeah, that's a fantastic additional way to help people where I couldn't cure this man's traumatic brain injury. I could help the lawyers secure a future for him so that he wouldn't be homeless with his wife. And I still see him every once in a while. And he still kind of piddles around in his garage and fixes people's cars. And he's He's not who he was before the accident, but he's living in his house and he has relationships and it's just so rewarding to see another way of helping people. That's that's so great to hear. So being an expert witness isn't only kind of a path to a little bit of additional income, but you can truly help people with it. You really can. And it's very rewarding. Tell me a little bit about the vetting process that went on when the uh, attorney called you. I know this is some time back, so you might not remember all the specifics, but do you remember what that first call was like and some of the ki- types of questions they asked during it? I honest to goodness don't remember. It was more of an <laughs> informal call that was, sure. you know, hey, we're representing this patient. Can we come by, talk to you, and maybe set up an, an interview where we're videotaping you interviewing the patient? And I said, sure, I'm happy to, I'm happy to help. I I don't remember any of the formalities. I mean, we weren't talking about hourly rates and things like that. At that point, we were just kind of starting the dance, so to speak. Let's pivot to preparation then. Um, Did you meet the uh, attorney in person? Yes, he came to my office. Did you do any uh, mock depositions or what was the, what was the preparation like? Not in that case. In that case, we had a conversation about the case 
where the attorney and I went through my opinions and the deficits of the my patient, his client, and then we did the video and I demonstrated through the video, I was able to show through the video what this gentleman's deficits were. And I've done several more video deposition, some work where we're working in mediation with this particular attorney and where he really likes to utilize my background is in demonstrating people's deficits demonstrating how their brains aren't functioning properly or they can't walk properly or why their brain MRI means what it means. And so we have some very interesting interview style questioning and a lot of videos that I've done with this lawyer in the meantime. So you've, uh, you know, you've obviously worked with different lawyers and been prepped differently. What works for you as a witness? What are the types of things that an attorney could or should be doing that really helps prepare, especially if you're a newer expert witness, to do uh, their best? I feel like a lot of lawyers do things differently, but helping me to understand what my part is. So I know as an expert witness, I'm not the person playing the game of chess. I'm the pawn or the rook or the queen in the situation. And I, I need to know what, what's my latitude? Where can I go? How do you want to utilize me? And sometimes I think it's helpful to know how we're going to build up to me and then what we're going to do after me. Or am I the final piece of the whole puzzle that's going to really nail this case home? So understanding where in the strategy, where in the, the whole process I am really helps me to focus my energies so that I'm not getting lost in the woods or preparing for something that I'm not going to be asked about or needed to talk about. How proactive of approach do you take? Do you find yourself oftening, or often, oftening, do you find yourself often needing to either uh, second guess something that the, uh, that the attorney is telling you or need to correct them on things very often? Or do you just kind of roll with it as it goes? So what I tend to do is probably something of both. Uh, again, okay. I'm not the one who has the overarching strategy, but I right. do like talking with the lawyer about, you know, this is a stronger argument than this one, and here's why, or here are some areas that might trip you up, or here's what you will need to have established in order for what I'm going to say to make any sense at all, because I know they know the legal process, obviously, far better than I do, but sure. I know how the medicine hangs together, and so working with the lawyers to come up with a strategy so that my piece is as strong as possible is really important. And that's how I go about doing that. Just make sure that I'm understanding and giving feedback to the lawyer about where my piece of the puzzle might be the strongest fit. Have you found yourself um, subject to, you know, getting grilled in cross or just during depositions a lot? And if so, how do you handle that kind of pressure? So it's an interesting kind of a pressure. I <laughs> tend to work pretty well with a pot of coffee and pressure. So I'm well uh, versed in late night depositions and early morning <laughs> trial <laughs> testimony. I find it very invigorating. So if somebody is asking me questions, I know I have to be on cross-examination on my best game. So where are they going with this? What game are they playing? Where are we two steps ahead of here? If I say yes to this, but don't answer in full, do I lead the jury or the judge in a path that we're not intending? So you're constantly walking, looking for snares or places that you could be led astray or that your testimony could be used in little sound bites to mean something that you did not say. So <laughs> I find that a very interesting and fun game and different lawyers on cross play it differently some of them will try to lull the expert into a sense of oh i'm just a nice person i'm on your side and just follow along doctor wouldn't you agree with me never no i will never <laughs> agree with you ever <laughs> some of them get really up in your face and angry and i found when they do that i just kind of go into my quiet space and smile, especially if I'm not on camera, just let them know you cannot bait me and just try to do my absolute best to continue with my line of thinking and with the medical information that makes sense. So I really try very hard 
to just answer the question, give my opinion. My opinion shouldn't change based on how the question's asked. So I try to be sure. as solid in what my thoughts are so that the discussion doesn't get derailed by a super sweet or a snarky cross-examiner. I find it to be a very interesting way to think about cases and about medicine in general. So I, I'm weird, but I think it's kind of fun. Is this uh, something that you've kind of, you know, learned over time or that your attorney has prepped you on, or is this just a personality? No, part of it's a personality. I, I'll, I'll argue with a rock, but part <laughs> of it is the first time I was cross-examined, I was sweaty palms and shaking and didn't know how the process was going to go. And afterwards got some debriefing from the lawyer that was excellent. All right, here's what you did that was really good and natural and good. This you could have done better. Next time I would do this, I actually had a couple of lawyers do this with me and refine my skills as an expert witness, which I found to be tremendously helpful going forward. That's something that attorneys should probably be doing because you never know when an attorney might use you again. And so the better that their experts are, the better, better that they're, they will uh, be able to perform the next time around, right? That's absolutely true. And I find that a lot of my work comes through word of mouth. So if one attorney has utilized me in the past and then tells another attorney about me, wouldn't it be to everybody's best interest for me to know what I'm doing? Sure. <laughs> I'd like to uh, pivot for a moment to ethics. I've heard varying accounts of experts that I've interviewed that sometimes they feel kind of nudged, not to lie, but to, pre to present their expert opinion in a particular way that they might not entirely agree with. Is that something that you've experienced? And if so, how do you deal with that? I have. I do not stretch my opinion. If my opinion is, no, that did not happen, this happened, or this is how the medicine works. I will just tell the lawyer straight up, I can't help you in that direction, but here's how I could help you, and this is how you could utilize my testimony. But I tell lawyers no all the time, because I think it's sure. important to have a reputation and to be honest to the truth, instead of just being able to be swayed in whatever direction that somebody wants to move you. So I was doing a deduction recently, where I had literally worked with the cross-examining lawyer in a previous case. Now they were unrelated cases, but so this was kind of fun. I'm being crossed by somebody that's utilized me as their witness <laughs> in the past. And sure. when we got to the end, he made a comment about something that I was willing to say in this case. And the lawyer I was working with said, oh, you should have heard all the stuff she said no to. <laughs> <laughs> and both lawyers knew me and knew that I was going to do my best to be honest to what I really believed and not be able to be nudged. And I think that makes you a stronger witness if everybody at the table knows that what you say is what you're going to say, and you're not going to be wishy-washy on the stand, and you're not going to be going all over the place, and you're also not going to be confusing to a jury. You are, you know, accomplished at this. You've been doing this for quite a long time. Um you have a body of work that is even longer than your, obviously, than your career as an expert witness. Have you ever ha been in a situation where somebody has tried to impeach you on something that you said a long time ago that maybe you've changed your opinion on, or maybe you, you know, new information has come out, anything like that? I feel like I'm tempting the fates by saying this, but no, not that specific <laughs> situation. <laughs> I have had attorneys try to prove that I'm either very defense heavy or very plaintiff heavy, but whenever they've gotten a hold of my list of cases, they could see that I, I really do probably a little bit more plaintiff work just because of the lawyers who have utilized me in my area, but I do a really good amount of defense work as well. So if there's a if there's a defense attorney who wants to prove that I don't do defense work, they're going to be sadly disappointed in my resume. <laughs> Before we wrap up, I have a question that I ask all of my interviewees. How important is winning to you? Is And is winnability a factor in deciding whether you'll accept an engagement in the first place? Being the pawn or the queen or the rook, I do not feel like I have an overall sense of the entire process. And so helping is very important to me. But winning is the, the lawyer's job. And I don't always know all of the factors. I don't know what the uh, 
you know, contrary counsel, what their information is a lot of the times. So if I just am honest to my piece, then whether or not we win the game is less important than if we played well and we just did the best that we could. Do you have any last advice for experts or attorneys uh, working with experts before we wrap up? One of the most important pieces of advice that I can give to an expert is make sure that you work for defense and plaintiff. This makes you a better rounded witness and it helps you to really understand both sides of the case you are in and it strengthens the impact of your statement. But if we really understand where we fit in the whole process, that can strengthen our opinion as well and really help us to help the lawyer to make a stronger case. So a little coaching, we don't know how the law works. And so <laughs> giving us an idea of what we're working with, I've always found to be very, very useful. Sage advice. Thank you so much, Dr. Kramer, for joining me here today. And thank you so much to our listeners for joining us here for another discussion at the Roundtable. Cheers. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Discussions at Roundtable. Our show notes are available on our website, roundtablegroup.com. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts or your favorite listening apps. 